So at this is I, you know, I'm putting all these hard questions to you, you know, your number one timbalero, your number one bongocero. Uh, you know, I've also seen you play conga and you're a really great rumbero and a great singer. You know, who's that conga player that that's your guy that that's you know you wanna it's very hard to I just know, name one but I'm person a, I'm asking the questions and you know all your fans that's the thing it's like yeah but at the end of the day that who moves my heart like nobody else who is that Tata Wienes Tata Tata, Tata, Tata Wienes there, there there's a lot of great Congo players uh, in Cuba and in New York when I was there, growing up there and one of the the, the guys that people imitate more was Mongo, and also Armando was playing already the crossover and that, but a lot of people didn't hear as much as Armando when he moved to the Bay Area and then he went a different way. Sometimes in New York we listen to, uh, so, uh, since I grew up in New York, to a certain amount of people and we think that's all there mm -hmm. is, but we have to listen to what's out there and the other sides of, side of, of the world. There's a lot of people. Uh, but uh, when I heard Tata, the sound, mm -hmm. it's not because his speed, which was a new approach, Tata changed the technique of the conga mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. But how many sounds he got out of one drum? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the, my next answer. I like other conga players like Julito, I used to play with Sensacion, very simple conga player, just basic time, tumbao. Back then, basic back then tumbao, it was tumbao. but that tumbao kick butt, mm -hmm. he will, como dice, mordia, mordia o like a mordel, atincao, like exactly. it was the anchor of the music, exactly, uh -huh. the other one with one drum, play with a 20 piece band, Tabaquito from Benny Morek, Mm. You see that guy with one drum, mm -hmm. and you know what? I don't consider myself a conga player, but I love to play one drum. Well, and you're it's, 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 it's a, it's a challenge, a not even to play time. Mm. If you could get a lot of sounds of one drum to me, Armando was oh. next to me, and uh, he took the, the low drum, and uh, he says, look, he got about a hundred sounds out of one drum. Mm -hmm. that, that to me mm -hmm. is the basic of conga. Then you could add other drums and play five or ten, seven or ten or whatever. That's for shows. But I mean, a, a, a conga player, timba player, bongo player usually have to work as a team mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. back up a band. Now, when you get your solos, then you could stand on a chair and jump to the sky and do whatever you want. You know, but yeah, but not every fourth measure. Not every gonna, fourth measure. Yeah, you're gonna Espe do especially these guys now. It's a bolero. One, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's knowing the song on? style. To your point, it's knowing the vocabulary <laughs> of the music, and that's what you're always known for. That whole notion of you you play sparingly. You know, you don't play overplay. Uh, it, it, Sachmo used to say, "It's not the notes you play; it's the notes you don't." Right. Very right. So you play sparingly, but you hit that accent, you put it right where it needs to be to, to drive the music along. When did you say, you know what, this is going to be the way I do it. This is my It signature. was in New York after I was already recognized and this and that, after the final stars and Rey Barreto and that, I said, you know what, why play so much? Let me just enjoy the things, give it a little bit of or space here and there, and uh, and I was comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. But then I went to my second part of my life, which was the the crossover between Latin music and going into the Santana band. Mm -hmm. That's a different life altogether. Right. Then right. the approach have to go for what the band needed. Right. Right. So then you have to do your job mm -hmm. of of what you needed to do in that band. You know, and you make a good point, per percussion, you know, there's all kinds of percussion in, in all different styles and types of music. And percussion is a loud instrument, right? I mean, the natural tendency is to whack the heck out of it, and especially as children, we love that sound. But I find uh, the best musicians, uh, it's really all about tone, uh, volume, 
Let me, uh, let me tell you listening something. Listening to other musicians. Tell me about that. I know John Santos since uh, he was 22 years old. I met him in New York. Um, like he says, the longest time I ever been in a band was when Machete Ensemble. I, I've been in that band longer than with any other band. And I still am a guest of John in certain important gigs that he calls me always. So uh, John and I were doing some uh, clinics in schools for uh, the uh, Adventures in Music. And that's elementary school kids, young kids, very, very young. And mm -hmm. you have to play live. If you see that a kid goes like this, yeah. oh, you're playing yeah. too loud. So this is not what I said, but this is what John says. That I could do a solo at the lowest volume that he had ever heard in his life. Because mm -hmm. I learned how to do it like that. That's right. Dynamics. Dynamics. I remember when I started with the charangas back then, most of the band was acoustic. So we used to use little stick, the, the, the thickness of a straw. Guayaba, made out of guayaba. Right? Whatever we could find at the time. But if you get guayaba, right. If you get rascabarriga, that was the, oh, mm -hmm. the ultimate. They, I don't even think you could get that anymore. But I used to get some uh, from Alfredo and from some guys that used to come from Cuba. Rascabarriga, you, you twist it like that. And when you go like that, it's like a shot. Bam! <laughs> So, um, I mean, this is like a speed quiz, ready? Because you, you were an institution uh, starting to play at age 15 with a major New York band. List them off. Come on. Starting with first to oh last. No, come on. You, there's, there's. Okay. At, at the beginning, I, I started not with a band. I started with trios. And it wasn't even Cuban music. I started with trios playing Jibaro Puerto Rican music. And I recorded with those guys like like uh, Nieves Quintero, Yo Motoro, and that since the beginning of my mm -hmm. of my career. And then after that, the first band I ever played with was a saxophone player that I always forget his name. It was a, a alto sax that was part of our Perez Prado band. Uh, he made a band in New Jersey called the Latin Rhythm Boys. There's a Bay Area band called that as well. Right? Really? Yes, Latin Rhythm Boys. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh -huh. But anyway, uh, the, the piano player was Gil Suarez at the time, which passed away already, and the conga player playing my drum, because he didn't have a drum at the time, was Fellow Barrio, which was later on singer of Broadway and composer of a lot of hits. Mm -hmm. uh, he has been my... my Compañero for many years. I was one of the uh, the uh, how do you call the guys in the wedding? The best man. Best man. Mm -hmm. One of yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was a lot of important people in that band, and that was the first group. From there, from that group, I went to Oriental Cubana. Mm -hmm. Then I went from uh, to Belisario Lopez. Then I went to Fajardo. But in between, I used to do recordings and that with other people. Right, because you were first call for people recording in New York I City. already was recording on bongo. I started playing on bongos on a lot of records. Uh, uh, I remember a, an artist from Puerto Rico too, Johnny Lopez. Uh, we did uh, a couple of, uh, a few records with him, directed by Bobby Quesada, a D Dominican trumpet player. Mm -hmm. That's one of the first bands I played with. Also, he had a band, I played with him. Then after Fajardo, I played with Pacheco, mm. the Charanga. Then uh, already when I was with Fajardo, Barreto, Rey Barreto was looking at me and looking for that guy that had the, uh, the typical touch. Mm -hmm. Typical. Because he had a Charanga at the time. Mm -hmm. And finally he says, oh, you want to come with me? And I like the way he was. A soft-spoken guy, very, very friendly, very caring, and, and I went with Barreto for almost about nine years. So then, then we went, we went with uh, Typica 73, Los Kimball. Those are the main bands, but in between that, I was in, uh, in the studio lots of times, it, it probably every week, because Ray was asthmatic. 
uh, he couldn't get up before noon and do recordings. So everything in the morning, he used to throw in my way. Hmm. So I was in the studio doing rubber horn commercials, uh, uh, all kinds of uh, commercials for all the stores in New York. You know, the Latin stores and Spanish stores? The American stores. The American the Amer stores. Everything. Barreto was uh, what you call uh, a studio musician. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he sent me, uh, I play with Zach Jones, Matt Lewis, I play with Lionel Hampton, I play with a lot of people with big bands in those days that they incorporated the conga or bongos in those days with jazz bands. Right. Uh, and, and like I said, a lot of commercials. So I used to go uh, once a week to the Union to collect the checks. That's when Eddie Palmieri called me. And I said, I would love to play with you, but I have a deal with Ray that he's really throwing a lot of work right. this way. It's too lucrative to pass Yeah, up. so I recommend, you know anybody? He didn't remember this when I talked to him. And I said, yeah, I know this kid. He's playing with Willie Colon. His name is Nicky Marrero. <laughs> so I threw Nicky down his way. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Nicky doesn't even remember that. Right, right. But that was the way it happened. <laughs> yeah, another fan question uh, from the internet, you know, when I when people heard I was going to talk to you, it was like the the buzz. Oh, ask him this, ask him that, and you know the inevitable question. Uh -oh. First of all, what's the best timbal ever made that you've played on? And secondly, why why don't why don't you have your own timbal and why isn't it the most popular one in the world? No, no, I do have my own timbal now. It's a timbal by uh, Gombop, mm -hmm. made of aluminum, and it's a, a short timbal. And uh, the idea of this timbal is that. Uh, Whatever they're doing today, is, everything is heavy. You mm -hmm. can't carry this. Right. I know conga players, I know timbal players that have uh, uh, hernias from carrying the instrument. Mm -hmm. So I designed this timbal with whatever materials they had mm -hmm. and put it together for gamba. Now, one of the questions that you read before the interview was from a, a group called the Congas and Timbales. Congas and Timbales, right. and, you know, et al. And that called. guy and a lot of other people said that the, their favorite Timbales was a Timbales that I have designed years ago for Afro. Afro, yeah, no longer in existence, the company. No longer existent, but it used to go, it was made in Holland and then it was distributed by Pearl. Mm -hmm. After that, there was a big thing there, I'm not gonna go into details, and they said the name Afro don't bring the right people to buy it. Let me just leave it there. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they let the 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 timbal go. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, it's the world we live in. Now. I know. It's no secret anymore. It's no we, we we knew it when we were growing up. Yeah. We, we felt it. And it's still there. Right. It's still right. there. Right. <laughs> um, so it is this. Um, We've talked about, you know, artists you've played with, you've reeled off probably a hundred names today of important people. But uh, let's talk about some of the contemporary artists because you're considered of that Eddie Palmieri stature, that, that person that, you know, is, is at the peak of their career. And there's many artists in California in the world right now that we'd call mid-career, right? They, they're past school, they're out in the world, they're doing their thing, they're recording. Uh, of these contemporary artists, and you've mentioned one, John Santos, a key collaborator, obviously. What other musicians of, of this era do you feel are, are moving the music forward? Oh, there's, I'm sure I'm going to miss a lot of oh, them. Oh, and yeah, this... I mean, there's a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, but, out, but again, your heart. This out here heart in the Bay me. Area, I could mention a few that come to my mind. Carlos Caro was one of them, mm. and you know, and, and uh, Jesus Diaz, another one that I admire because of what he has become because of his hard work mm -hmm. uh, since he came to the United States. Uh, a, a lot of other people, uh, and in New York there's many, and in Puerto Rico, mm. uh, I don't want to forget Puerto Rico, uh, there's tons of people coming out of uh, the conservatory there, and the end at the... Uh, the uh, Pablo Casal uh, Conservatory and sure. that. And just guys like Manolito, oh. that used to be like a little kid, that used to come and, can I play and, and, and sit in and that, and Manolito already 
is the teaching of the conservatory. He has a, a, a building that uh, he uh, has a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Manolito Rodriguez, you're exactly. talking about. Exactly, and that's just one of them. Mm -hmm. the, uh, there's people there that I adore. The, uh, David Rosado Cuba is Seguro. my good friend. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to forget a lot of people. And you mentioned Puerto Rico because you have to, you know, they, they say that Puerto Rico and Cuba are the wings of the same bird. I'm, I'm half Cuban and half Puerto Rican. And, and they also say that, you know, it was the Puerto Rican community in New York that really kept Cuban music alive, made those few icons that you listen to, put them top, and, uh, and, and that in many ways were joined at the hip. Well, tell, first, first of all, my that. kids are half Puerto Rican and Cuban. My oh, wife yeah. is from Ponce, and you know, if the Puerto Rican women are tough, imagine the Ponceans. Well, there's but a we're saying, still here. Uh, you know, there's a saying about that, <laughs> that uh, a Mexicana will, uh, will be unhappy with her husband and wait till they get home to discuss it, but a Puerto Rican will tell you, Right there on the spot. Right there on the spot. No, this is not the place. No, no. It's <laughs> anyway, uh, what I feel about Puerto Rico is that uh, since I came out of Cuba at 12, I took upon myself to say that I've been adopted by, by Puerto Rico. Uh, I go there and all I get is love and respect from people, from musicians. And uh, I love Puerto Rico a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. If I could, I would go to live there, but you know, it's very difficult to do that. <laughs> Especially trying to move this palace that you oh, live in no. now all the way to Puerto Rico, I don't think Only so. in instruments, that's a whole m m movement. <laughs> I, I need five trucks for the instruments. <laughs>